The healthcare detective Frank Lally has written a book for Simon & Schuster about how to get affordable health care. Called Your Best Health Care Now, it is available online, in-store, wherever fine books are sold. Mr. Lally is also the health correspondent for Parade and the former editor of Money and George magazines and the senior advisor at healthcare.com. Did I leave anything out? <laughs> Uh, oh, I yes, do, uh, the detective. I do uh, household chores uh, from time to time, okay. but, um, <laughs> but I and, need to be nagged. And, and, and uh, rumor has it, over the years, wicked, wicked Brussels sprouts. Yeah, no, I do that. I, okay. I, I make very nice Brussels sprouts. Okay. Uh, you know, Jill, we, uh, we've been talking about nursing homes now for you know, two months, um, and the picture doesn't get a hell of a lot better, I have to say. Uh, COVID-19 uh, has turned Connecticut's nursing homes into death houses. We've said that before. I'll say it again. COVID has killed more than 10% of Connecticut's nursing home residents since March. And now Connecticut has the third highest nursing home death rate per capita in the entire country. And happen? as I speak, and this is the point that just is so depressing, 20 more senior living residents will die today in Connecticut. I mean, the newspapers are reporting it as, oh, the percentage of deaths have gone down. Sure they have, because the number of cases has gone up. I mean, come on, I, I'm not a math whiz. But here's the bottom line, 20 more people die today in these nursing homes and, and senior living facilities. So as, look, as res regulars know this, uh, I pulled together a five point bipartisan plan <clears throat> to stop the dying. And the first, um, and I think very important, is to test, track, and trace all 20,000 uh, health care workers, all 20,000. I realize Connecticut isn't likely to have enough test kits to do that for months. But that's a shame. At least five other states have secured enough tests, and they're testing their workers. Second, hire 213 independent registered nurses, one for each nursing home, to enforce infection control immediately and we'll we'll talk a lot about that today third encourage safe family visits to lift spirits and bring a measure of heightened security to the nursing home both positive things fourth start a bottom to top investigation of the entire nursing home system in this state as soon as possible. A number of lawmakers I know have told me that they're phoning William Tong, Attorney General, to get his thinking. Attorney Generals in Massachusetts and in Pennsylvania have started investigations, and a lot more are coming all over the country, and it should happen here too. Fifth, Governor Ned Lamont should immediately appoint a nursing home action task force to bring urgency and organization to implement ideas like those and better ideas to stop the preventable deaths from this highly contagious virus. These are preventable deaths. The virus spreads. We've got to find out how, why, and stop it. Allow me to thank, by the way. Oh, and so, Jill, that's the overall plan. So uh, today I want to uh, focus in on registered nurses in the nursing homes. Uh, I, I, you support this idea, right? Right. <laughs> Is that clear? Okay. No, I, 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 we've discussed this. What I support is doing very practical things that you can do while people figure out. And this is my worldview, okay? You do what you can right then and there to not make bad worse while the people who are supposed to be sorting out the policy sort out the policy. But you don't just sit and, you know, play tiddlywinks while while there are practical things that can be done. I guess that makes right. me transactional. So, yes. That's, I, that, I think that's perfectly uh, logical. Uh, so, look, allow me to thank uh, this is Representative David Michelle of Stanford. Stanford has been very hard hit by uh, this coronavirus. Um, I want to thank him for promoting the infection control idea. Now, many people believe that move alone would save hundreds of lives. And get this. <laughs> man, oh, man. Government inspectors say 58 percent of Connecticut's COVID nursing home deaths, 58 percent, are in homes with, guess what, infection control problems. That includes four out of the five with the most cases. You see a pattern here? This week, I talked to 
uh, people with inside knowledge of major infection control violations at one of the 10 nursing homes in this state with over 100 cases. And so, look, at, at this point, I'm granting them anonymity, and I'm not naming the nursing home. But what they told me is the truth as they know it. One person told me the nursing home doctor routinely didn't test patients with COVID-like symptoms. The, the person said the doctors would approach it this way. If he found pneumonia, he'd stop there and not test for COVID-19. You don't test, it's not a COVID case. The person added that the nursing home shipped patients to a hospital where they tested positive and died of COVID. So those deaths were recorded as hospital COVID deaths. And the nursing home staff could keep telling the families that they had no COVID cases. Hey, you don't have any cases if you ship them out to a hospital. The person it's also said that patients with COVID were put in rooms with patients who didn't have the virus right. or didn't have it for, for very long. Okay, we shouldn't be mixing them together. And the healthcare workers didn't have the adequate PPE, you know, that's the gowns and masks that protect themselves and the residents. The staff even told workers to make their own mask bandanas at home. With, and when, when the workers complained about COVID patients coming in from hospitals and mixing in with healthy residents, about having to wear protective gowns for an entire shift as they move from COVID to non-COVID, you're supposed to change your gown every time that happens. They wear masks for days while extra PPE was locked up out of reach in the supervisor's room. So they complain about thing, these things as they should. And the message from the director was very clear. Stop complaining. We have a business to run here. The staff did take workers' temperatures when they arrived for work, okay? But the nursing home had only three thermometers for 100 patients and staff. And one was faulty. <laughs> now, the, my, my wife, Carol, my wife, when I told her that, she said, that, that is nuts. We have five thermometers in our household for five people, okay? That includes our 18-month-old grandchild, gorgeous, red-headed, blue-eyed Gigi. She's very cute. And she's got her, five thermometers. Of course you do. <laughs> but the other thing is just asinine, and excuse me for weighing in because this is no, supposed please. to be. Okay. Really? A bandana? That you then yeah, have really. to take home Bandana. and watch, wash, and the business to run. Time to mention that. What do you get a patient? Six hundred bucks a day. Yeah, you get six hundred bucks for uh, taking in a COVID patient from from a hospital. So, yeah, that's so, why they come in. And 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 at the beginning, especially at the beginning, that we're being mixed in with regular patients. They're doing. A, I mean, I think the nursing homes are doing a better job of that now. How would you feel? If you have a loved one in one of these places that you are paying good money for and you put them in because you wanted them to have good care and they needed it and they couldn't be at home and Jill, you can't Jill, see. What's happening is what's happening is the families are taking their pa their uh, loved ones out of these nursing good. homes. And if they have someone at home who needs nursing home care, they're yeah. keeping them at home as long as they possibly can until this thing gets straightened out. So they but can look, get people out. Oh, yeah. Okay. But get get this. And I mean, you're not going to take a COVID patient home. But no, you I understand. But take someone to see you. Okay. But look, get this. This is ridiculous. A worker was allowed, this is the same nursing home, okay, allowed to go to work, even though she had a very low oxygen level and the thermometer was broken. The staffer told her, write down 98.6 and go to work. <laughs> Another person said she saw a worker in the same nursing home in late March with no mask, no gloves, going from room to room and getting within six inches of other people. <laughs> I mean, six feet of social distancing, six inches without a mask, without gloves, going from COVID to non-COVID. <sighs> oh, look, that's one nursing home. But the infection control problems there mirror what government inspectors found in nursing homes statewide, not enough PPE or none at all, mixing COVID patients with non-COVID, insufficient hand washing, no enforcement of social distancing. It's a pattern. So, Jill, look, any other thoughts about the, the registered nurses moving in uh, to these nursing homes? As uh, my late lamented friend Mark Gladman used to say, immediately would be fine. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, it would. So here's the other thing I did this week. I, I zoomed into a press conference uh, supporting healthcare workers by the Black and Puerto Rican uh, House Caucus and the Progressive Caucus. And I was struck by two things. First, the passionate calls to treat essential workers more fairly. Representative Robin Porter, uh, she's from New Haven, said Governor Lamont should issue an executive order granting workmen's compensation to people getting harmed in these hazardous nursing homes. They, they don't automatically get workmen's comp. In fact, it's discouraged uh, to even file because you can have a very hard time collecting. She says executive order from Lamont would straighten that out. Plus, she called for regular testing healthcare workers. Boy, I support that. Adequate PPE. Do we need to talk about shortages of gowns at this point? Hazard pay. <laughs> it's hazard work. It's hazardous work. They deserve hazard pay and assistance for workers struggling to pay their rent or their mortgages. But second, I was saddened by the hecklers. A guy kept screaming, Black Lives Matters is a hate group. And stuff like rioters are black and blacks are killing blacks. It's what? all the truth. Okay. Then someone blasted a truck horn to drown out the speakers. So a call to support healthcare workers, some making $13 an hour to literally risk their lives to help the sick and vulnerable, also brings out racist hecklers. From where? So, you know, look, a, a majority of these workers are people of color. And studies show that the higher the number of minorities in the nursing homes, the higher the number of COVID cases and COVID deaths. In fact, blacks are three times more likely to die from COVID than whites. So, Jill, any thoughts here? I mean, what can we do about these disparities? They're so obvious. At least, well, for one thing, remark upon it. One of the things that's been absolutely fascinating watching uh, the various press conferences, this is now outside of nursing homes in general, is it became abundantly clear, oh gosh, eight weeks ago, that uh, this was not an even-handed disease. Or, uh, not at all. And at it all. was literally, I mean, beyond decimating, the percentages were alarming. And yeah. not just black, but his, it, it, it's... And You've got blacks dying at three times the rate. I mean, the 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 fact that it has created a sort of situation where there are still people who aren't even aware. He's like they're they're walking around in their their like glass uh, outfits, totally unaware of who is being affected and how badly. Uh, and I just wonder if it uh, informs the allocation of resources. She said, uh, <clears throat> attempting to be diplomatic, but really irked. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been. Look, Rob Real, I mean, he's the head of the Healthcare Workers Union. Uh, that's S-E-I-U 1199-N-E. That's for uh, New England. He just sent a letter to his 25,000 members, uh, many of them people of color. And he, here's what he wrote. Quote, OK, to often essential workers means expendable workers. Due to the criminal indifference of government, especially federal government and nursing home bosses, 13 of our members have died fighting COVID-19, 13. And he added, we can only achieve economic justice with racial justice. I, I really, th I mean, that sums it up, Joe. I mean, you, you look, obviously we see what's happening with George Floyd and, and marches all over the country. Um, Saturday is going to be a massive uh, outpouring of Mixed be of white and black and yellow and every shade you can imagine in massive crowds yeah. all over this country, all 50 states. Mm -hmm. the, the, this is and these healthcare workers at 13 bucks an hour or less, okay, w risking their lives to save people in these nursing homes and take care of them and feed them, wash them, bathe them. Uh, and 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 what what are they getting in return? Hecklers who show up and scream at them, blare truck horns to drown them out. Uh, I think this we country, need a little more. This, this country, I think this is a moment where this country is waking up. But we're also seeing armed forces, national guard, 
anybody else with a badge uh, lining up and in many cases the police and others treating these people with brutality when they're trying to peaceful protest looters are a separate story of course arrest them throw them in jail uh, they spoil everything but peaceful when peaceful worker peaceful people are are protesting and yes. they get cornered and cops come in and smack them overhead with a baton this is not okay come on come on america there's come one on, other america. thing as as we're coming on america there's one other thing to add and that is in in my view and it's something that uh, marshall has said is obviously everyone needs to protest what is really striking is that there's been no either um, big statement, commission appointed. There's been no, it's like, all right, look, there are, for example, there's obviously a situation with rogue cops. Mm -hmm. Why hasn't someone come out and essentially said, this needs to be, like, why hasn't some of the, uh, the legitimate the things that are being legitimately protested been mm-hmm. acknowledged. You know, you, you, you can, of course, well, call it racism, yeah, systemic uh, racism. That's fine. Uh, there, when yeah. I say fine, it's just this isn't a news story. We're, we're, no, we, need a, we need police reform. Look, the Obama administration made steps in the right direction, and Trump came in, and whether he you know, was the law and order a president uh, two days ago, from the beginning he operated like that, and he rolled back some of these controls over the police, and they're being militarized. I mean, that's a, that's now for decades uh, all this, uh, they can buy the uh, at a great discount all these military equipment, and and they do that instead of hiring workers, so yeah, it, and policemen and and training them. It's a lot cheaper, frankly, to have a helicopter fly down low and disperse a crowd than to uh, have a whole uh, phalanx of, of of police officers. It's happening happening all over the country. All right, that that's look obviously that's got to stop. The police have to serve and protect. And and where they do not, they need to be prosecuted immediately, uh, with no delays. There's no excuse for for no, no, putting a knee on anybody's back, let alone for nine minutes and uh, neck. There's no excuse. Quite for right, that. detective. A, we're we're you, we're you, limited. Yeah, we're um, over. Yeah. We got to stop. But look, uh, Burial is right. We can only achieve economic justice with racial justice. And it should come as soon as possible in this country. We've got to restore America to its values. Thank you, Frank, the healthcare detective and senior advisor to healthcare.com. Send your questions or concerns about finding affordable health care to healthcare detective at robinhoodradio.com. Frank will try to address as many of your questions as he can on future broadcasts. Also, look for his book, Your Best Healthcare Now, available online in store, etc., on my desk. And Frank, one last thing the email that you want people to use to get in touch with you about the nursing homes. Absolutely. My personal email, you know my name, Frank Lally, L A L L I. Okay, no dots. Frank Lally, numeral one at me.com. I'm, I've heard from some of you. I want to need, hear, hear from more of you. What do you think about this issue? Marshall and I are going to stay on it. We're on this nursing home story and we're on it for you. <laughs> 